When do I put it on my channel? When the girls decide. What's your <laughs> name? What's your name? <laughs> Why so serious though? <laughs> What's your name? It's a simple question, Daddy. My name is Osei Kwame. Today, what does Osei Kwame mean? Today, Osei Kwame means uh, a free guy, you know. Mm. A lover of film, a lover of art, a lover of music, a lover of life. Yeah. I think there's something you've left out. A lover of conversation. A lover of conversation, yes. Because I feel like... But life, okay, yeah, life is a big, a, life big umbrella. Life is one big conversation. Yes, yeah, it's one big, yeah, conversation. Yeah, I, I, the reason we, we bond a lot is because of our, our mutual affection for conversation. conversation. Yeah. So let's start off the conversation with what you think about conversations. I think conversations are... Um, this might sound fake deep. But they are, they are the pathway to the soul. Mm. It's like a path. Conversation is, is a journey. Conversation is uh, a walk mm. together. And often you would know a lot about somebody when you walk together. Because in conversation, you, if you do have room for empathy, in conversation you empathize with the person. Mm. In empathizing with the person, you walk a little bit in their shoes. Mm. In walking a bit in your shoes, you understand them properly or understand them better. And after the conversation, you feel like you know why they are the way they are, why they behave the way they do. So, what are, what, are, what, are some of the, what are some of your favorite conversations today? What, if you say today, you mean figuratively? Yes, yes, figuratively. Um, I like to have <clears throat> uh, mental health conversations. I like to have... Uh, Passion, people's passion influence, influences, as in things they love to do and why they love to do them and things that bring them joy. Yeah, I like to have those conversations because um, there's so much um, darkness, I should, if I should put it that way. There's so much darkness, there's so much um, stress, there's so much tiredness all around, you know. So having conversations with people <laughs> <clears throat> about things that bring them joy and watching them go on and on in that moment is they, they get to live they get to have the it's a dopamine mm. run through their system and, and they're happy to share you know so for example if you ask me to talk about film or to talk about you know voice acting or art or telling stories then i begin to nerd and when i nerd i feel like oh it's a, such a good release so yeah i like to have mental health conversations as well because that also helps people unpack and offload certain things that, you know, they otherwise may have been keeping to themselves because they think the people that they would talk to may not understand enough. So, yeah, um, those are my favorite conversations today. And, of course, having conversations with my partner, which are usually um, therapeutic in that sense or in this sense as well because we do have conversations about um, our experiences and how we navigate our experiences. So if you're watching this video right now on this channel, that's what we do. So those are my favorite <coughs> type of conversations. I like them a lot. Um, which, which, um, which conversations would you say have brought you here? Can you, do you remember one or two conversations that have brought you here in this moment to become a, um, a filmmaker, a product? A vlogger, etc., etc. Yeah, the conversation with myself will be the first one. Okay, so let's let's explore that a bit. Yeah, so the conversation with myself, asking questions about my situation back then, or my 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 person back then. Before when you say back then, uh, that's around twenty seventeen when I started to question what else. You know, is this an existential? crisis or something you just want to find out what is next from here where do i go what do i want to do what do i love you know what's next in the story how do i want to live so in having conversations <clears throat> with myself um i came to the conclusion that um i may not want to do the thing i was doing at the time as in working in the sense of um nine to five or in that uh general sense yeah like that boxed sense of nine to five I, I may not necessarily want to be doing that the rest of my life because uh 
I do love a lot of um, freedom, free will, ability to. I think I think um, joy comes from being able to decide or choose when and how things mm. should happen to you and how you react to things. So that's so I had that conversation with myself, and <clears throat> thankfully the other conversation I had was with my partner, and that was to figure out how to you know, come out of that space to witness what I am witnessing now. So mm. it was a journey through conversations. And your career, because I followed your career, and because conversations are becoming very, conversations are very key part of this, this intervention. Yeah. Um, let's start off with, you know, having, your, in your past life, you were a radio presenter. Yeah. Being a radio presenter means that you're having conversations with people that you do not know, people you cannot see. Or don't see. even see yet. Exactly. Um, let's, let's discuss that a bit. Okay. Um, and how you go into the studio and do not lose your mind. When you are laughing at your own jokes and... Okay, so when I was having a conversation with you a while back, there was something you mentioned that you write for someone. Mm. When you're writing, you picture somebody in your head and you talk to the person or you write to the person. You have a conversation with the person. It's the same, it's the same trick for radio. Mm. You speak to someone depending <clears throat> on your mood, depending on what you want to communicate. So if it's about a serious conversation and it has a lot to do <clears throat> with reverence and respect, you may want to speak to somebody that you see in that light. If it's a fun conversation, if it's gossip, if it's jokes, you may want to speak to somebody you see in that light, that's somebody you're comfortable with. So getting into the studio, um, you psych yourself to yeah, speak to that person in its entirety. Right. Um, what's, the, what's the most difficult conversation you've ever had? What's the easiest conversation you've ever had? I think... This is why am I sounding so philosophical? <laughs> Call me the philosopher. The most difficult, difficult conversations are the conversations of self. Mm. Because um, there is always the. What is the most difficult conversation you've ever had? There are too many difficult ones. I don't think I've had the most Do you difficult care to one. Share one or two? I think one of the most difficult conversations I've had is what I mentioned earlier. Having a conversation with myself and deciding to leave uh, a space which a lot of people wonder how, why, why would you leave like a brand or a, a workplace or a career or even an industry as you know attractive as that to say that well you just want to be on your own to try something for yourself. Mm. So it was a very scary difficult conversation you have to come to terms with the fact that well when you do jump you're that's it you either fly or you die but shouldn't those be some of the easiest conversations because these are conversations about yourself and what makes you happy yeah but yourself and what makes you happy exist in a world you don't exist in a fantasy you don't exist in your mind this is coming from somebody who was on radio and who's Rea who created realities? Yes, you create realities. But in the end, when you get up and leave, you leave to the world. Mm. So if I was having a conversation with myself about things that made me happy and wanting to pursue those things that made me happy, I think that I will still have to do those things in the world. Mm. And the world is where the issue comes in because you may know yourself, you may trust yourself to a certain point, but... The things that you do will be done outside of your control in a way. I mean, you do it, put it out there, and then whatever is out there is not in your control anymore. Mm. Now you have to build stamina to react. Mm. So in, in, in the reaction, because you don't know what the world is going to throw at you, that is where the scary part is. So the, the conversation with self is not necessarily a difficult conversation. It's the implication of that conversation. That scares you. Mm. Yeah. So that was one of the toughest conversations I've had to have with myself. And what's the easiest conversation you've ever had? 
paradoxically, it's the same conversation. Mm. Could you elaborate? So I know, I, I know what I can do. I know what I love and I know what I wanted to do. It was easy for me to know that, you know what, yeah, I want to do this. I'm going to do this. Mm. That was, that's easy. Like, I trusted myself <clears throat> enough or I think I had uh, enough knowledge of self mm. and belief to want to do what I wanted to do and I'm doing. So that was an easy take that I would bet on myself. Mm. That, yeah, I can do this. But then I also had to <laughs> rely on the external and the external being also um, somebody I was with that supported me fully mm. and, and made me know that with, with the part of the ropes that were supposed to be hung outside the world where I was afraid to jump, she would help monitor mm. those ropes so that we see that, okay, I can land. And even if I fall, it will be okay. She'll be there. Yeah. Right. Um, I think I'm picking up back on that. Um, I think I know the answer to this next question, but I'm going to ask anyway, who's your favorite person to, to have a conversation with? Who's your favorite conversationalist? My partner. Okay, go on. Yeah, that, my partner is my favorite conversationalist because um, she's very analytical. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and yes, yeah, she, she's like a mirror, you know. Mm. Um, she's not judging. She's only reflecting. So it's easy to have conversations with her and if you do um, open up, mm. you get back the, 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 the energy you've given. Mm. As in, if you open up this little, she, she can only do so much. If you open up a lot, she can give you a lot of uh, information back or a lot of perspective that you wouldn't have uh, otherwise. But this is somebody who, who is having a conversation with you in, within a context yeah. being your best friend and being your partner yeah so that would change the dynamic of of the conversation if you're having this that same conversation with your mom or with your with somebody you met on the Else, street, it's yeah. going to be different completely different yes um would you say you have grown to to almost require conversations with your partner to mm-hmm. you know to 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 make sense of the of things that don't make sense no, not almost always. Not almost always. Mm-hmm. I'm actually still very much reliant on self-conversation. Mm. A lot. I think the higher percentage is self-conversation. Mm. But I'm opening up and trying to have more conversations outside that. And my favorite person to have the external conversations is my partner. But my internal conversations are still the, the biggest. Where, who gives the best conversations? The conversation with yourself? Or the conversation with your partner, where do you find what's the difference? There's no best, okay. Maybe that's that's the wrong There's no best. It's, it's, it's so what's the difference? Of, there's, there's more of purpose than what it serves. Mm. If I want to um, go with belief and passion and fuel and you know, propelling myself like you know, euphoria, like you know, enough energy to move, I go with the <clears> conversation <throat> of self in the things I can do and my abilities and how I can go about them, mm. but. When I have to step out, that's when I look into the mirror. Mm. It's, it's just but philosophy. I'm looking the mirror, into the, the mirror is reflecting you. But how, yes, but the mirror so, also tells so, me the things I cannot see when I look down. But because this, the mirror would show you a different perspective. Right. But the, at, the same, at the end of the day, it is you. So are we therefore saying that in the grand scheme of things, by having conversation with your partner, you're having conversation with yourself? Again, yes. And so It's an external version of yourself. That is why the choice of partner or the person you end up with is the most important thing you can ever have in your journey. Okay, do you want to take me through the conversation you had with yourself before you settled on your partner? Wow, the conversation I had with myself before I settled on my partner. <clears throat> Who has now become very integral to just you having conversations and you looking out into the world and making sense of the, the world that, in general. Yeah. And the, so knowing my uh, shortfalls or, no, I, I, I accepting that conversations with myself were going to be one-sided. Mm. Of course, you have to have perspective. And in order to have perspective, you have to respect the perspective or to believe that a perspective was um, valuable enough, you know, to be had. So... 
of course, I've always been a partner person as well because I always thought that, yes, I do believe in myself and everything, but I've also had a lot of disappointments and, you know, doubt because disappointment brings doubt in your next thing because you thought, oh, it's so good, I'm going to do it. And then you do it and you're like, ah, so why didn't people even... So where did I go wrong? How do I, you know... So you need somebody. It's, it's in my mind, I, I mean, I've, I've come to admit or accept that you need somebody to be able to give you that um, other self perspective. Which is yourself, if you think about it. Which is yourself. But it's, 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 it's a more objective, neutral self mm. that you can rely on. Yourself, nonetheless. Yes. Um, what's the place of conversations, would you say? Um, what's the place of conversations? Do you mean physical geography or what? Today. What's, or what, what's the place, place of, of conversations, conversations generally? In, in my life? In your life, in the society. What do you think the place of conversation? Do you think, then do you think we're having enough conversations? I don't think we're having enough conversations, period. Um, I, I think that conversations are, again, the, the, the journey. It's, it's a walk. And they, they open us up to a lot of things. And I don't think we have enough conversations because everybody's busy trying to survive. Everybody's busy, busy trying to make sense of their own conversation, even before they try to share in the first place. So it's not easy for people to share their conversation with you if they, they feel that they are not ready one or that you would not understand or that they may not get the answers they want from you or that they may not even trust the answers they get from you. Mm. So conversation, for example, I, I, I started um, this channel, Asetna, specifically for conversation. Mm. The conversation of preserving our uh, conversations, mm -hmm. promoting our conversations, bringing more, you know, enlightenment or uh, fostering more conversations around the conversations. It's, it's just a lot of conversations. Mm -hmm. Like Asetna like, is the way we live, and the way we live is built on conversation. We're just literally having conversations together as we go through the years. It's just conversation. Which conversations? do you reckon would lead to more conversations in our society? As you've established, conversations are how we make sense of the world and how we can make progress. Which conversations must we have in order to have more conversations? I think we should have conversations about um, the beauty and the, 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 the safety of conversations. Mm. Yeah, that I think we should make people more... Uh, attracted to the, 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 the culture of opening up, the culture of speaking up, the culture of even knowing how to speak. So I think the beauty of that is what we should have more conversations about because if I hadn't found somebody who, for example, understood what it, like what the things I would tell her and be able to, you know, reflect it and give me perspectives that made sense to me, I would be having conversations with myself, doing things by myself, and just hopefully relying on a, a, a win or a failure. And if the failures were more, then I'll be crawling back into my shell ever, like even more, having less and less conversations with myself. And then you just keep going into the dark, like into the shell, just deeper, 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 deeper. So, um, we should, we should make it um, an enticing thing. So we should make it a point to have conversations. conversations. And to make it a point to uh, be less judgmental when conversations come up. Because conversations are the very fabric of our souls, I think. And they are too deep for you to uh, play with or for me to share my conversation with you and you laugh about it. The next thing is the hashtag or... Yes, and you laugh about it or you, you don't understand it and you just think that, oof, as for this, your conversation, yeah. I think it's fine that people don't understand your conversation. I think the point is that they should not belittle the conversation. The conversation. In any form. Yeah. Don't belittle it's the conversation. It's fine if you don't understand. Maybe you're not at that stage where you understand the conversation. And don't take it out there yeah. if you didn't understand it. If you couldn't carry the conversation, I don't expect that you, you take the conversation. It's not your place to carry out a conversation somewhere because first of all if you don't understand it you're going to miscommunicate it mm. and another person is going to think that that's the truth 
And then the person is going to look at me with your truth of me, not my truth of me. Mm. Therefore, how important is it? How important is the person at the end of your conversation? Like, what, what should go into a person's choice of, of who is at the end of their conversation? It's, it's a gamble. I mean, you sh you're going in there thinking that the person you're going to be talking to should understand you, um, should empathize. But then if the person is not even aware of these um, elements of understanding, of empathy, how do you, how do you even know? So it's, it's a gamble. So you, that's why people open up in bits. Mm. It has to be over time. You don't go pouring out your uh, deepest, darkest secrets to... Unless it's something you just want to throw out to somebody, you don't go pouring it out to a random person. Conversations do happen over time before you can know that, okay, there's somebody you can give heavier loads of conversation to. Mm. Yeah. Um, in my experience, yeah. as a journalist, I find that the best conversations happen between strangers. I feel like strangers feel safest amongst each other when having conversations because, they, like you said, there isn't, they're not worried about being judged because they know that at the end of the conversation... They might not see you again. They're, you're going to remain strangers, as Malcolm Gladwell says. Yeah. Talk to me about strangers. Um, what do you think about strangers and what do you think their value is to conversations? Maybe that informs um, therapy. Mm. When you do therapy for the first time, you don't do therapy with family. Mm. Or when you do professional therapy, you do professional therapy with a stranger. The person doesn't know you, so they don't judge you. And it's not their place to judge you except to listen and try to help you understand or figure out what you may be going through. Mm. So that's where therapy comes in. That's where we should make, a, make it a point to pay more attention or give more um, energy or support to mental health institutions and mental health um, people, people who, you know, help us make sense of these things. We should, we, should, we should pay more attention to them. When is the right time to have conversations? When is the right time to have conversations? <sighs> There's no right time to have conversations, in my opinion, but um, some, some of the conversations will come. You, you, you hit a place where you feel like, yeah, the, the words will come out. You, you say it or you, you try and find somebody to you know, bounce off. And there are some that will have to be literally forced or beaten out of you. So there's no right time. When's the wrong time to have conversations? Ideally, there shouldn't be a wrong time. If the people around you or the person you're walking on the path with is, is, is there aware. There shouldn't be a wrong time? There shouldn't be a wrong mm. time. Ideally, there shouldn't be a wrong time. But um, I also think that we, we tend to forget that Everybody is having their own conversations as well as having conversations of you and other people and even the whole, uh, what do you call it? Um, all of us connected mm. in conversation as a people. Everybody's bouncing off all this energy, all these energies. So um, where, where we are in the fix and want to pour out or have a conversation and the person who may be next to us may not be ready and our inability to see that the person is not ready for such a conversation at the time. And sometimes because we feel that a person is by us or has been by us on our journey, so we feel that they, they automatically supposed to take on that conversation at the time is when it's the wrong time. Because if the person doesn't react in the way that you're used to, then you think that, ah, I'm alone. And yeah, I mean, I understand that sometimes you cannot control that you really need a conversation at the time. But you're not entitled to forcing the conversation on somebody. So there is a wrong time to have a conversation. That's what I'm saying. Ideally, there shouldn't be. But everybody's having their own conversations. Yeah. So when somebody does take on your conversation, it's, it's a privilege that you shouldn't feel entitled to. Should I have a conversation? Should I have a conversation because I have to have a conversation? Or should I have a conversation when I'm ready to have a conversation? When you're ready. Sometimes, in dealing with people, especially people you love, you feel so helpless when 
they can't have conversations with you because they don't feel ready and you feel helpless because you can't hear them and so you can't help them talking about that 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 space and what to do when you feel helpless around that's that's a tricky one i don't have an answer to it but can you grapple with the idea of i understand completely what you're saying that sometimes uh, you want to have those conversations as in you wanting to help the person but the person is not ready and it's affecting yeah. um, your dynamic because yeah. the person is not ready to share and you feel like you need to take that you need you want to walk that journey with them to offload and the person is not ready to share and it's it becomes mm. yeah i had i have no answer to that because mm. the person has to give you the room as in open the door for that conversation and if the person is not opening the door and you're banging sometimes it might make them go further into the corner of the room mm. do you know what conversation you're going to have with your kids Too many with your male child, with your male kid, there, there are too many life conversations. But do you know the, do you know the very first conversations with them? I don't know till the conversation happens, which means I don't know till they're here. Mm. Yeah. What What if they are female? Or it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change. It's a human conversation. That's that's. Let's not um, put gender on conversations. No. I feel like I had to ask and contextualize using gender because of the society we find ourselves in where there are a set of expectations for I don't expect to Ghanaian, raise I don't expect to raise my I, I want to finish the question okay. what there are expectations for a Ghanaian a male Ghanaian child versus a female a female Ghanaian, Ghanaian child. child there are expectations for an African a male African of course because it's, it's, a, it's a global village now whether they are Ghanaian or not they are going to face the rest of the world and so there are a set of expectations and their set of they're going to be seen in a certain lens so i wonder which is why I, i i thought to ask about what they are male or female and what kind of conversations are going to or whether gender is going to influence your conversations with your children gender is not going to influence my conversations with my children i'm going to try as much as possible to have human conversations because human conversations are that of emotions and every human has emotions mm. um and every human has a way that they react to emotions mm. the emotions may be put under the same umbrella mm. there's love there's sadness there's hate there's you know disgust there's all those things but then everybody has their way of reacting to it and every human has their way of reacting to it it's not every man has their way of i don't want my kids to think that men do this because of that and have a justification for behaving in a certain way uh, behaving in a certain way because of the agenda no if if it's kindness ah yes If I'm going to have conversations with my children, I think one of the first conversations would be about kindness. Mm. Yeah, kindness to self and kindness to the next person. Because kindness makes wow, this is too philosophical. Kindness makes the conversation <laughs> a walk in a meadow. It's yeah. nice. And kindness. that's how conversations must be had. Yes. It's 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 comfortable. It's safe. There's no judgment. Kindness is kindness is it. It's too it's too rosy here. We have to get into some dark parts. Um, um, Why do you want to get into the dark parts? Because I'm behind the camera and I feel like I want to take advantage of you. <laughs> anyway, um, what kind of conversation do you uh, did you have with your mom? Not that that's a dark side. I'm sorry. It's that, not. I'm sorry that that's, no. that joke preceded. No, no, no. It's, it's not. Um, unfortunately. Most of the conversations with my mom or my siblings or my family were not uh, the kind of conversations that I'm having now. They were more um, reactionary or reactional conversations to our realities at the time or our living um, experiences. Yeah, they were more reactional. We're more um, reflecting on the things that have happened, and for the most part, we were not having conversations about how it made us feel and why we may need to unpack or deal with certain things a certain way. It was more like, yeah, it happened, yeah, or we made jokes about how it happened, 
after that happened, you know. So those were the kind of conversations um, I remember having. So I've not really been a, as analytical as my current partner mm. in my conversations, which is one thing I'm learning a lot of. Right. What conversations do you have with your dad? Almost none. Is there a reason? Yeah, so... How much of that story are you, <clears throat> are you able to share? Yeah, so there's, no, there's not much conversation with my dad, um, just because he was in a, in a space where fathers and sons didn't have to have conversation. He, he, he's always been in a space where it wasn't a conversation, it was a talking to. Talking to is not the same as having a conversation. He never saw you as an equal or sitting on the same platform and having a conversation. So that I don't think I've ever had conversations with my father. No. Mm. No. That's, that's, that's a very serious yeah, I've thing never, to say. Yeah, I've never had... That's a very serious thing to admit. Yeah, I've never had... So I wonder what, what kind of man you are. Because the, the, uh, people say that a, pers a man is the conversations he's had with his dad. And if you've had next to none with your dad, then what kind of man are you? <laughs> How, what, who is Jose Kwame today? So Jose Kwame is, the, is, 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 is um, based on the, the impact of the lack of conversation and finding conversations within self right. and self-knowledge. I also know that I do not want to put that on somebody else. Right. So, I mean, either you become like him or you become completely opposite. And mm. I think I'm, I'm leaning towards the opposite, whereby I want to have conversations with my children, as mm. in, as a person. Why are you feeling this way? Why are you behaving that way? What is it that I can do for you? How are we going to solve this? How are we going to fix this? You know? So that is also why I'm also an advocate or a staunch advocate for breaking that. I call it a, I call it a generational curse. Mm. You know, because we lack conversations with our parents or our fathers in, in that sense. I'm currently working on a short film which is literally based on conversation between a father and a son, which is inspired by my lack of conversation. So I'm using the art as a therapy um, avenue, you know, mm. to, to tell that story and also to advocate and, you know, educate people that we do need to break that generational curse of not having conversations with our sons and daughters and our children. So uh, now it says father and son thing in the film, but like I said before, I'd rather have conversations with my children, not gender-based conversations, but just conversations as humans, as how they feel. So for you, your art is beginning to imitate your life. Yes. Right. I wasn't going to go there, but you, you brought back the issue of children. Yeah. Because of your unique situation in that, um, you know, the world, people tend to, can I ask you questions about race? Yeah, 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 sure. Okay. And so you're going to bring children into the world. Mm -hmm. We're going to have an African father and a European mother. As an African father, you've had to deal with being looked at a certain way in certain parts of the world. Do you think about these things when you when you think about your children and the kind of conversations, are you, do you think that you must have conversations with them to prepare them for how the world is going to look at them because of what they look like? Yes, definitely. Definitely. It's something my partner and I talk about a lot, actually. Mm. We have to have conversations with them because, like I was saying, conversations of self and belief of self and knowledge of self will always have to exist in an external world. Mm. So they have to be aware of the external world and how the external world views them. I, I don't think by the time they are born and grown to a certain age, the world would have, by virtue of these campaigns that we're having or these little conversations we're having, completely changed like overnight and start seeing people as people and having conversations with people as a person and not because they're from here or they're a guy or they're a woman or they're a they or whatever they choose to identify as. It's not going to get there in the next two generations even. I don't think mm. so. That's, a that's the reality 
I, I, I think I, I, it might sound pessimistic, but I don't think the world is going to change in the next 10 years or in, the next, or in that sense that by the time they are 15, they don't even have to worry about being from a Ghanaian father and a Dutch mother. It's a conversation that they're going to have to, or a reality they're going to have to deal with. So they have to be prepared. And yet, and yet, what kind of conversation do you hope your children are going to have? Be- mm-hmm. Yeah, what kind of conversation do you hope that your children are going to have? Because I don't imagine that you want them to have or deal with the kind of conversation that you dealt with. If it's, if it's their reality at the time, I mean, that's why conversations are there. Mm. If, it's the, if it's still their reality, then we're going to go through it together. Mm. I hope that they don't have to have those conversations the way I do have those conversations. Of course, it will evolve. It won't be the same as I did. But if it's still their reality, then we're going to go through it together. Mm. We have to have those conversations together. They have to understand. They still have to offload, unpack perspectives, new perspectives, understanding, okay, navigation, yes. So, Are there conversations you stayed clear of? And if so, why? No, I don't think I don't think I've stayed clear of particular conversations. Mm. Because I think all conversations can be had if the two people are um, there's an underlying uh, empathy and understanding. If, if there's understanding, or if there's a, there's room for comfort and safety, if the room is safe, then there's no difficult conversation in the world. Mm. As difficult as it is, if you know that if I bring it out. Uh, there's no judgments. It's safe, and there's understanding, empathy, and you know, yeah. People knowing that okay, this is your perspective, or this is what you feel, but it's not the the truth. But it's okay that it's what it is. Then yeah, every conversation can be had. Here's a final conversation. Here's a final question on conversations for you. Do you know what your final conversation is going to be? If I did, I wouldn't be here. That is why I'm living the conversation. Nobody knows their final conversation. Mm. Do you think about it? I don't think about my final conversation. Why don't you think about your final conversation? Because between, between, anybody... because between this conversation and my final and that conversation, conversation, there are lots of so course. many conversations. conversations. And so I'm looking forward to those conversations rather than thinking of what the end is. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you for this conversation. <laughs> I hope we have another conversation. I can't believe we actually had a conversation about conversations. <laughs> the philosophy of conversations. Yeah. That's, that's nice. Yeah. So I already know the title of this of this video. Yeah. <laughs>